In the fifth and sixth episodes, demon troops begin to attack human territory, and all the soldiers try to fight them even though the demon troops are too strong. The king is furious because the golden-haired hero hides when the demon army starts to attack, and then the king's guards suggest using purification magic to stop the attack of the demon troops even though the consequences of using this magic are huge. Elsewhere, Gozaru is seen telling all the demon troops to stop attacking because the king will use purification magic. The king and the wizards begin to cast magic until the purification magic succeeds in protecting the kingdom. The next day, Fleo returns home and is greeted by Fenris. After that, they eat together, and then Fleo is still looking for a shop to sell his shield using dragon scales. Blossom also wants to sell the vegetables in her garden, while Bylery also wants to breed horses because previously, Bylery worked as a caretaker for war horses in the kingdom. Balarasa and Bellano cannot do anything, and Fenris will look after them like a pack of wolves, then Fleo tells them to train to become strong. In the kingdom, the princess comes to see the wizards fainting because their magic energy has been drained due to using purification magic, including the king. The princess must continue the king's duty to protect the kingdom and will revoke the golden-haired hero's hero position because when the demon army attacked, the golden-haired hero did not help. They also don't have much magic to summon any more heroes from the other world, and the princess has to consult a fortune teller. It is seen that the golden-haired hero is now exiled and cannot enter his house because of the princess's orders. Fleo and Fenris are getting ready for bed, and Fleo thanks Fenris for being by his side all this time, but Fenris is already asleep. The next day, Fleo and Fenris plan to go on a date, and the homework is handed over to Balarasa and the others. Meanwhile, Fenris is very happy to be going on a date with Fleo. They enjoy their date happily while exploring the beautiful city. They also look for accessories for Fenris to wear, and Fleo chooses a beautiful brooch for Fenris. After returning home, Fenris is still happy to get a gift from Fleo, which makes the knights jealous. Fenris also wants to sleep with Fleo, but Fleo can't sleep because he is embarrassed. The next day, the golden-haired hero enters the dungeon to look for a weapon to defeat the demon king so that he would be recognized as a hero again. It is seen that Suya is also accompanying the golden-haired hero there, but suddenly, the secret door opens, and a strange voice is heard telling the golden-haired hero to draw the sword there. The strange voice will grant the golden-haired hero's wish if he successfully pulls the sword. The golden-haired hero immediately pulls the sword until a genie named Hia appears who would grant him any three wishes. Meanwhile, in the kingdom, the princess is seen meeting with a fortune teller because she needs to find a solution to the attack by the demon army, but suddenly, everyone's necks have iron rings attached to them. The princess orders her troops to look for intruders in the dungeon. The golden-haired hero has made a deal by sacrificing everyone in the kingdom to grant his wish because previously, the previous king had made a deal with Hia, and he was finally able to lock Hia up. The fortune teller tells them that there is a true hero who can protect the kingdom. Everyone has already guessed it is Fleo, and then the princess asks to go there alone to persuade Fleo. Elsewhere, Fleo is selling dragon scale shields to a sword dealer. Fleo also wants to sell to other traders even though the trader want to own all of Fleo's production and will introduce Fleo to other traders. Balarasa is very jealous of Fleo who is good at negotiating in trade, while she cannot do anything. Balarasa wants someone like Fleo, but that makes Fenris angry instead. Fenris tells her that there is someone who is strong like Fleo and is also interested in Balarasa, which is Gozaru. Fleo meets them again and thanks Balarasa for introducing the traders there. They are going back home, and it is seen that Fenris wants to go on a date together like before, but Hia comes there wanting to kill Fleo. It turns out that the golden-haired hero's first wish was to kill Fleo, and Hia immediately attacks him, but Fenris sacrifices her body and is injured. Hia attacks again, but the automatic barrier protects Fleo, and Fleo tells the system to do healing magic, but Fenri's wound is already profound. He attacks with great force, but Fleo manages to block it. Fleo is very angry with Hia. And then he remembers Fenri's promise that she would stay with him no matter what happened, and since then, Fleo has not felt lonely by Fenri's side. Moreover, Fenri's is also willing to accept their relationship as husband and wife even though Fenri's knows that it was Fleo who killed her brother, but Fenri still loves Fleo from the bottom of her heart, making Fleo touched. The system tells Fleo that he got Hia's power, and then Fleo casts time-turning magic to restore the injured Fenri's. 
Hia is very surprised that Fleo can use time turning magic, and Hia is also attacked many times by Fleo who is very angry. Hia is surprised that Fleo has unlimited power. <laughs> Fenris awakes and sees Fleo beating up the defenseless Hia, making Fenris very happy that Fleo is fighting for her, but remembering that Fleo doesn't want to kill someone makes her realize that Fleo has crossed the line. Fleo almost kills Hia, but Fenris immediately stops her. Fleo is very happy to see Fenris still alive and immediately hugs her tightly. On the other side, it is seen that the princess and her troops are teleporting to look for Fleo. It is seen that the royal wizards are exhausted because they have used purification magic, and then suddenly, the iron necklace on them falls off, and they think Hia has failed to fulfill her promise. The golden-haired hero is seen cornered by the soldiers, and then another genie who seems like Hia possesses Tsuya's body. Tsuya changes his appearance to become a wizard and turns the golden-haired hero into a giant monster, then they manage to escape from there to take revenge on the royal family. It is seen that Hia has also regained consciousness and has been healed by Fleo. Fleo asks why Hia attacked him, and it turns out that it was the golden-haired hero doing it. Fenris plans to invite Hia to be a helper in their house, even though Fenris actually wants to have a strong flock. Fleo allows Hia to come to his house but promises not to kill anyone again. Hia is very happy remembering that Fleo was angry before, and Fleo plans to repair the damage caused by the fight earlier, but Hia advises not to use time-turning magic again because it has side effects. Fleo is also aware of his unlimited abilities, and Fleo can even use the magic of the genie race. The other knights are surprised to see Hia come to Fleo's house, but Bailari is afraid of being in the same house as Hia. At night, Balarosa and Fleo talk together, but Fleo is still confused about why he has great power. Balarasa is also initially confused because now his opponent has become a friend, while the golden-haired hero who he thought was a good person, has actually become evil, but after Balarasa meets Fleo, he finally gets the answer to all his confusion. Fleo returns to the room to meet Fenris, but Fenris looks gloomy because Fleo has the power of a genie and can return to his original world anytime. Fenris is afraid that she won't be able to meet Fleo again and wants to follow Fleo to his world, but Fleo doesn't think about returning to his world because he thinks the previous world is unsuitable for Fenris. Apart from that, Fleo plans to marry Fenris because remembering that Fenris was almost killed earlier makes Fleo realize he can't live without Fenris. They start making out like lovers, and Fenris also doesn't mind Fleo using his real face when he is with her, but Fleo still wears a disguised face as his figure in this world. It turns out Hia is watching them, which makes Fleo panic. Fleo tells Hia to leave his room and immediately wakes everyone there. Then, this episode ends. Is it interesting enough about this episode? If you're still curious about the continuation of this anime, you can wait for the latest video on our channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.